Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreational programming session with Mr. Zozin. Let's make a little bit of announcement and officially start the stream. Uh, red car uh, live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch adult at television website? Today we are uh, speeding up some shit. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna give you the link to where we're doing all that. Uh, HTTPS twitch.tv slash surging, and I'm gonna ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. And then go, the stream has officially started. The stream has officially started. So, on the previous stream, we implemented a sim carving algorithm which <laughs> enables you to do, uh, you know, content aware resizing and stuff like that. So, this is sort of like a meme uh, application for this algorithm because it works so bad on faces. Uh, the main um, the main purpose of that algorithm is, in fact, uh, to scale things like this, right? So, for instance, I want to actually make this image narrower uh, without disturbing neither the person nor the building. So uh, I can make a, I can use a content-aware algorithm to do that. So let me actually quickly try to do that. So here's the image, uh, and I'm gonna do output PNG. It's probably going to take some time, and that's the main, basically, problem with this algorithm, as you can see. Uh, it is goddamn slow. Right. So, let's wait until it finishes, and we'll see the result. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing? Uh, so, yes, yes, yes. It's getting faster, actually, I suppose because the image becomes smaller, so it's kind of getting... This is very interesting, actually. I never thought about it. Uh, yeah, there we go. So, and uh, again, the original image looked like this, and our goal was to make it narrower, so now it looks like this. <laughs> Actually, it's too narrow, but what was funny is that it even carved a little bit out of the building to actually fit the person. Actually, it's kind of funny how it, like, sort of, like, follows the silhouette of the person a little bit, kind of. Uh, right, so, but but that's basically what the content-aware algorithm, like, resizing is, right, so it's aware of the content automatically, uh, right, and it just, like, realigns the objects, I suppose, right, so that's what it is. And, uh, like, there is a couple of low-hanging fruits in the whole implementation that I uh, did, which will help us to speed it up a little bit. Ideally, I think the performance of the algorithm should be fast enough so we can resize things in real time, right? Because in the original paper, uh, right, so let me actually see if I can find the original paper. Uh, yeah, okay, so here's the original paper. I'm going to put it in, in the chat and also it's going to be in the description. Uh, right, so spe speeding up some shites. Uh, right, so they demonstrated the algorithm resizing images in real time on... 2005 computer with Windows XP. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Imagine like 20 years ago, it was already possible to do this algorithm in real time. Uh, right. So, and this is a 10 years old laptop, so definitely it should be possible in 10 years old laptop. But we'll see, we'll see. Maybe we'll not have enough time to actually do that, to actually do the real time thing uh, on today's stream. But at least I want to... Uh, not use a very naive approach anymore, right? So, because there are some things to, that can be easily improved in that algorithm already. So, and that's going to be the topic for today's stream, right? Speeding up some shit. Speeding up some shit. So, let's take a look at some uh, stuff. Oh my god, that's that's a huge text. Uh, so, Team Scar, thank you so much for Twitch Prime with a message. Hi, Mr. Zos. I'm going to use my sub to suggest a stream idea using Lank with Raylip. Why? Because it would give the same deep inside as APL while being plain old Unicode that gets formatted by the compiler into the symbols. It has an FFI, so Raylip is the, uh, is the picture. And it can do things like threads, file systems, networking. One interesting insight, for the example, would be that, oh my god, <laughs> any output array can be magically recognized as sound, pictures, or GIFs, just suggestion, that's all. I have no idea what that is. Let me actually Google that. So the, the language is... My favorite programming language. Uh, all right, so... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, okay. Uh, so some 
length divide. Okay, so I suppose you kind of push in this list on onto this thing. So let's actually see. Uh, all right, so it's four. You sum up. Uh, okay, I guess I, I will take a look at this language, but I, but but I won't promise anything. Honestly, I won't promise anything. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so yeah, Brooklyn Dev, thank you so much for Twitch Prime with the message. Keep up the awesome streams. Thanks, Mel. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm just like checking things that I find interesting. Uh, Valeni, thank you so much for tier one with the message. Speeding up some shies. That's right, my friend. Uh, Jason Roth Foz, thank you so much for tier one subscription with the message. Love these topics. Uh, thank you. Right now, people suggesting them on Discord actually. Uh, so I pick the ones that I personally find interesting. Sandy X, thank you so much for tier one with the message. Speeding up some shit. OMG, OMG, he's gonna see him the algorithm. Honestly, I'm not gonna see him the algorithm because it's kind of. Uh, pointless with modern compilers because they will CMD the shit for you automatically anyway, right? So there's a uh, kind of optimizations that compilers do these days, which is called vectorization. Uh, so they can do that automatically. You don't really have to do that manually. So what I'm going to be doing is rather restructuring the code so it doesn't do things that are unnecessary. Right. So I'm going to do something that the compilers cannot do automatically. Uh, right, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, whether it's going to be asymptotic optimization, I think it's going to be asymptotic optimization. Right, right, right. So I think there's, we could do some asymptotic improvements on the algorithm, right? So it's not going to be like this kind of stuff, right? Because that can be delegated to the compiler. So yeah, yesu, yesu, yesu. Mm-mm. mm So we have some interesting question in the chat. Hi, it's Odin. When I code for several hours, my eyes start getting dry. There is a very easy solution. Just look at your issue tracker and you will instantly cry. And that will help with the dryness of your eyes. So that's how I personally do that. Uh, so it helps. It actually works. Um, so... <clears throat> Let's go and just like take a look at what we can do with this shots. So there's also pull requests in here, which I probably want to accept. Let me actually take a look at that. Uh, so uh, use original sim value during loop. I already looked into this pull request and it kind of makes sense. So I'm probably going to just accept this thing. Uh, and yeah, so I think I did a little bit of a fucky wacky as I was recovering the sim. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's actually take a look at this entire thing. So sim carving, uh, to be fair, at that stream, I was extremely sleepy. Again, it is a miracle that I managed to implement something, right? So it, it is absolutely freaking miracle. I didn't expect that I will manage to implement anything, honestly. Uh, so the, the fact that it has a little bit of a bugs, it, it's fine, right? So we can just like iron out the kinks, uh, you know, and stuff like that. So what are we doing here? Uh, so here we sort of did the DP already, I suppose. Yeah, so here we did already the DP. Then we start looking at the bottom of the image, trying to find the smallest seam, which is understandable, right? So this is the smallest seam. And as we go to each individual row, what we're doing is that, yeah. So we are, imagine that we are essentially uh, somewhere in here, right? So we are at a particular row and we're currently looking at this specific sort of pixel. Uh, maybe I'm going to even do something like that. So we're looking at this specific pixel. And what we need to do, actually, as we climb up, uh, right, we need to look at these things and pick the column that is the smallest among these three. And we are collecting that result into the seam. So, and then we're, since we're using that original seam to pinpoint this location, we're kind of moving it and it keeps drifting around. Uh, and this is such a subtle bug that was not really obvious because I suppose on average it was okay. Yeah, I think on average it was okay. In fact, Here's an interesting thing. Here's an interesting stuff we can use for optimization. In the original Wikipedia article, they said that you don't really have to use even DP. They say that 
greedy algorithm works. So a greedy algorithm would be not computing the DP table and like traverse and everything, but just using the result of the Sobel filter directly. Just always pick the one that is the smallest. So that, that's going to be the greedy one. Uh, right. So we're looking up who has the smallest energy. So we go there. It's not going to be globally optimal path. But it's going to be sort of local one. And they say that it also works. It works a little bit worse, but it works and it's faster. So because the greedy approach works, I think that's why this bug stayed unnoticed. Right. So, so, so thank you so much, whoever actually uh, submitted the fix. Uh, so uh, I'm going to actually accept that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh, shit. Thank you so much for catching this right so i'm gonna just merge that uh right into the ripa right into the ripa so and essentially the idea is to basically like pin the original sim so we're saving the original sim in here and as we are computing the next sim yeah we're always doing the original the way of setting from the original one so yeah that's that's a good solution i think that's a good solution thank you thank you so much uh so you see, I'm not outright rejecting everyone's pull requests. I merge them sometimes, right? So, uh, <clears throat> so th th that video where I was actually reviewing pull requests on in zozilib.js, uh, so many people got really angry. Not so many people, but some people got really angry that I was rejecting some pull request without writing a wall of text of justification of why I rejected the pull request. The, the reality is I get way too many pull requests to actually give this much attention to each individual one. I'm sorry, I'm doing that for free, literally. So yeah, and I don't freaking know. Um, anyways. I don't really owe anything to anybody. Uh, so let's go ahead and just fetch the, the things. Avoided backdoors. What if this pull request actually introduced some backdoors? You know, is there any scroll to the right? No, there is no any scroll on the right. Maybe some, some kind of a trick would be to put some code somewhere far in the right, uh, right? So you, you will notice and then just merge it. I wonder if it's possible to do it on GitHub. It's really interesting. Anyways, so let's actually merge that. And uh, let me actually try to run this entire thing and see if it, um, you know, fixes some bugs. Maybe that bugs of carving the side of the building was caused by that. Not because the person was too close, but because that bug. It's very interesting. I never thought about it. Let me sip my tea. Mm -mm. Should have asked ChatGPT to ask a wall of rejection text. God fucking damn it, yeah. Probably. The funny thing about like using ChatGPT to generate these bullshit responses and stuff like that is that people just use ChatGPT then to get the summary of bullshit responses. And it's just like it adds this intermediate, like useless oh shit. Oh fuck. All right, so um, no, it still actually carves this thing around. Uh, I think it even carves even more. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, I didn't. I, I don't think it actually changed anything that much. We can also take a look at the Lena. All right. So does the Lena change the shape of the face uh, if we do it like that? So let me readjust the camera. Uh, super quick. So Lena is a little bit faster because it, it's a smaller image. Uh, now it's pretty much the same. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same, I suppose. Yeah. So anyways, uh, what we can do to actually speed it up a little bit, maybe it would make sense to um, essentially measure the performance every time we run this entire thing, right? So because here we're just compiling this entire stuff and then we're running the application. So it would make sense to, uh, you know, actually measure some performance. So let me see. Uh, there was something like clock get time, if I'm not mistaken, right? So there's a clock get 
Uh, yeah, so here it is clock get time. So let's quickly do that. Uh, it will make it unbuildable, unbuildable on Windows, but I mean, who uses Windows in 2024, <laughs> right? Uh, so let's actually, you know, create some sort of a wrapper function called get time, uh, right? And essentially, what it will do, uh, it will just get the time. So we need to have a monotonic clock. Uh, right, so monotonic clock, and here we'll have to maybe allocate this thing on the stack. Let's go ahead and allocate this entire stuff on the stack and take a pointer of this entire thing. So I suppose, um, so the only reason why it will error out is because I didn't have a permission to get the time, so which means that um, I suppose it will never like fail, right? So an error. Yeah, so on success, it's actually zero. So we're going to just automatically expect it to always be zero. We expect it to just have a, like, you know, an access to getting the, uh, to getting the clock. So, and after that, so the time spec, if I'm not mistaken, chat, uh, time spec, what are the fields of the time spec in here? Uh, I don't see the definition of this goddamn freaking thing. Where is the definition, brother? Uh, is it defined somewhere else? I don't freaking remember. Um, so there's probably, yeah, there's this thing. Uh, time spec here it is. So we have TV sec and TV and sec. All right. So that means we can do tv sec and so this is nanoseconds right so it's nanoseconds which means that we probably want to um basically divide this entire thing by nine zeros one two three one two three so we're just doing that uh which is doesn't make any sense i suppose yeah it doesn't make any sense so essentially we need to take this thing uh, and add sex right obviously we probably want to uh, convert it to double plus this thing multiplied by one two three one two three one two three something like that i suppose that's what needs to be done in here uh i think we might as well actually don't cast anything because this will this thing will automatically turn it into double and then that thing will automatically turn it into double and it's going to return the double in here okay anyway uh so what we want to do we want to take the double uh begin get time uh, and uh we can now print something like no block uh no info uh so resizing took uh this amount of sex right this amount of seconds and this is going to be essentially get time minus the begin and there we go that's how we're going to quickly measure the performance uh hopefully that will work that will work mm -hmm. so yeah it took four sex which is nice we can take a bigger image right so that one so i suppose that will take like maybe 20 seconds or something like that but but i want to see uh, the amount of seconds so we can actually measure the improvements of our optimizations mm -hmm. i wanted to use time command because a time command will include also compilation mm -hmm. No dumping every iteration to STD out should also speed that thing a bit. Very, very much. It's it's not gonna be noticeable. It's not a low hanging fruit, honestly. It's not gonna change that much. Because they're not printing that at a very high speed anyway. So just like why? If it was like a lot of text at very, very high speed, then maybe. This is a small amount of text, thousand of lines, thousand of lines, and look very, very slowly. It does nothing. Actually, it took a minute. Eh? That, that's pretty surprising. Hmm. That's pretty surprising. Anyway, so, but I think we're gonna use Lena as the benchmark, right? So, because it's faster and any improvements uh, here are gonna be noticeable anyway. Right, so four seconds. Okay. Let's go into the 
um, into the main application. So the first thing, by the way, we can do is to not recompute luminance every iteration. Ugh, fuck. <clears throat> Anyways, so what we got? So here's the thing. Uh, what we do with the lumen luminance basically corresponds one to one to the pixels. Uh, instead of recomputing the entire luminance over and over again, we can just remove the same pixels in luminance as we do in the actual image. And that way, we do not recompute the entire image of, of luminance. So we just don't have to do that. Right? We simply don't have to do that. So uh, let, me, let me see. Uh, we can put the luminance in here. Uh, right, and we can just remove the columns along with the pixels. In fact, uh, I feel like it would be nice to maybe move this operation to a separate function of some sort. Let me quickly do that. I have an idea. Right, I think it's it, even like these two, uh, two lines can be moved to a separate function. Uh, so something like image remove, remove column. But we effectively remove in a column at a particular row. So I suppose it makes sense to even specify that we're removing column at a row. Uh, and essentially here we're going to accept an image uh, like so. I don't think we have to accept it by a point. All right. So because we're only modifying the like the data, not the structure itself. And here we're going to accept uh, the row uh, at which we're, we're removing the column and the column that we're trying to remove. So this is a pixel row. Uh, this is the row. Um, so and seam is the column, right? So like this, so this pixel row column. And that's about it. So this is sort of like a separate function, which like tacks away this think that doesn't really make any sense into something that kind of does make sense right so it's a more of a semantic operation if you know what i mean uh right so in here we can say okay so we're removing an image at a row y at a column which is the sim and we don't have to do that anymore so the reason why i'm abstracting away this specific operation is because now i can have a similar one which does the same but for a matrix right because the luminance is a matrix uh right so we can do mat remove column at a row uh, and here we can have mat mat int um row int column so and we can simply even copy paste this entire thing in here like so so the only thing we'll have to do we'll have to replace image with mat like so and maybe even uh, pixels we don't really refer to pixels directly yeah we do not refer to the pixels directly so but we do refer to the inner type so we'll have to replace this with floats I suppose. Right. So in essentially what I can do now, uh, I can do mat remove column uh, and we're removing luminance at y sim. And we're just repeating this entire thing here as well. Right. So now we're not recomputing the luminance on each iteration, the entirety of the luminance on each iteration, but we just like remove it, we update it. And that way it should be faster. So the previous thing was actually like four seconds, so it doesn't even compile. Um, so what's up with it? Expected something semicolon. I see. Um, yeah, there we go. Did it become faster? So there was a four seconds. Eh, it's still four seconds actually. So it didn't really improve the thing that much. Surprisingly. I don't know. It's actually it actually improved it. So it warmed up some caches. Hmm. It in fact warmed up some caches. That's pretty cool. Uh, so three seven. So we can try to repeat that several times. Mm -mm. Yeah, three point eight and stuff like that. So if we kind of like stash this entire thing, uh, so let me commit uh, the get time thing. Uh, measure time of generation in knob. And I'm going to actually push that right into the repo. Mm, let me let me see. So uh, now I want to actually stash this entire thing 
and see if that makes it slow again if there's any performance uh, improvement mm -mm. i think there is like it's five seconds now without that improvement that we did yeah i think i think there is definitely an improvement yo that, that's a lot of actually improvement so i'm gonna like uh enable the optimization that we just did and uh, so five six seconds uh -huh. and how about this one now it's four there is definitely an improvement holy shit okay so just not doing just doing less already improves the performance that's pretty cool so and we only improved like one step and let's actually see if it uh yeah so it, it's the same result right as expected uh so the next thing i suppose we need to do we need to not compute the entire sobel filter but the, the problem with the sobel filter is a little bit more subtle uh because pixels kind of depend on their neighbors right so that means we need to recompute more of the things actually we need to recompute more um so let's maybe experiment let's imagine that we have some sort of image in here uh right so in here is the sobel filter so if i remove this pixel somehow like i removed this pixel uh that means i need to recompute all of the pixels that dependent on that, on, on that pixel which means that uh it's all of these things Right, it's all of these things, like around it, uh, like so. So, and if we imagine that sim goes like this, right? So, along the entire sim, along the entire sim, I suppose I just need to recompute all of the neighboring things. So here, uh, it's gonna be something like that. For this thing, this neighboring things like so for this thing these neighboring things and for this thing these neighboring things um all right so that makes sense i suppose that makes sense uh though this one yeah so it it is it has to be like that uh so and if you remove each individual thing in here you basically need to recompute things along the seam, right? No. Yeah. So I'm just thinking, what's going to be the the best way to do that? And obviously, we need to only do that. Uh, we need to only do that when we already removed the pixels right we only have to do that when we already remove the pixels mm -mm. so i'm kind of curious about this one this one looks weird but i guess it's all right that's basically what we have to do so we need to keep track of the things that we need to recompute how are we going to be keeping track of these things uh, how are we going to be tr keeping track of these things? Maybe we could mark them somehow. We could mark them with none. Or the Sobel filter. Can a Sobel filter be negative? I feel like it cannot be negative. Maybe it could be negative, actually. Right, if I take a look at the Sobel filter. Yeah. So some of the things can be negative. So it's not a particularly great thing. Um, so I was thinking that maybe as we remove some things, we just mark the pixels that needs recomputation, um, that needs recomputation with some sort of a special value, right? So that you cannot achieve. And that value could be literally just some sort of a num, none, some form of a none. Uh, maybe even very, very specific none right so that it's obvious that that's the none we're we're doing um though you're gonna end up uh iterating the entirety of the thing anyway um so it would be better to maybe have some sort of a list but i'm really really not sure 
really really not sure so i'm gonna just keep it in here uh so but the, one of the things i probably want to do first of all uh is to maybe factor out the operation that does the computation if you know what i mean so this one Mm, the operation that does recomputation. Um, so let's do Sobel filter at, uh, like so. And I want to take this entire thing uh, and maybe factor out this stuff. Right, and in, in all fairness, maybe I'm gonna just return what the fuck just happened. Yeah, I actually did this thing. So float like this and grad. Okay, so grad is only used in here. So in, in effectively what we can do, we can just return this thing. Uh, all right. And essentially, instead of doing this entire thing, we can just do sobel filter at. Uh, Sobel filter at. So I don't really know what this function should accept. Uh, the way I'm going to figure it out uh, is by basically uh, rebuilding this entire thing. Right. So in complaints, it wants CX, uh, which is understandable. So I'm going to just provide CX, uh, CY, and that's that's basically how it's going to be parameterized. So and because these things are only used. Uh, in here, I can just move them in here, right? So which allows me to uh, simplify this entire stuff. So here we also accept the matrix, right? So let's quickly go ahead and accept that matrix for which we're doing all that. Uh, and uh, here we have to specify the matrix C, uh, X, C, Y. Okay. So this is actually a pretty cool way to figure out what function should accept. You, you want to uh, like factor out a, some chunk of a code to a function, just copy paste it there and try to compile and just follow the compilation errors. And like it asks for these variables, just pass those variables to, to a function and you figure it out. So it would be kind of nice to like allow the compiler to maybe inline this function if needed. So let's actually mark it as static, right? So the thing about the... Uh, the non-static function is that the compiler will think that somebody is going to use this function like outside and will prevent it from inlining. To be fair, what I've noticed is that quite often it's not a problem for a compiler, right? So the way the compiler works with the functions that are exported from the object, so it has a version that is exported and then if it needs to inline it, so it just inlines the body of the function anyway. Right, so it sort of like maintains two versions of the function. So just because the function needs to be available outside of the object, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be, you know, inlined. But just saying that the function is not going to be visible outside of the object kind of helps with optimizations, like generally. So and maybe this is something that I want to actually go ahead and do. Just go through all of this function and say that they're like local internal to the object so you can do whatever the fuck you want with them maybe even completely eliminate them uh right because we're not writing a library honestly we're not writing a library so maybe that will help the compiler to do the right thing uh right so i think it's a good idea to try that so yeah just do all of that minor throwing to just do all of that uh, and all these things are very much inlineable, actually, if you think about that. They're all very much inlineable. All right, let's go. So, and some of these things are not even used anymore, right? So maybe we don't even need them. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. So, how was it going? Uh, all right, but it didn't really improve that much. So we'll already say 03. Uh, so, yeah, it should already crank up all the optimizations, like, very high. Anyways, uh, so Sobel filter at... Uh, and so now, so the, the reason why I factored it out, so I can actually use it outside of recomputing everything. So if I want to recompute very specific pixel, I can actually do that, right? So that, that's kind of the point in here, right? So if I need to do that, I can actually do that. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, so yes, so yes. So thank you so much, Anonymous Gifter, for uh, tier one sub. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you uh, for gifting the subs. So how are we going to be approaching all that? So as I go up, so we're going from the bottom to up, essentially, right? So and 
when I, once I removed it, I can't try to recompute this thing right away, right? So I can't do that yet, um, because maybe some things are going to be changed up above, right? So I really need to first remove all of that stuff and only then uh, recompute all of those things. Uh, but then how I'm going to actually approach that so I can maintain a list of the coordinates that I have to iterate through but how do I know how many coordinates I have in here so obviously I have uh, five elements at the seam but I have way more of these things in here so it's not particularly obvious or straightforward to figure out right so it's not particularly obvious or straightforward to figure out so this optimization is kind of it's kind of hard so another maybe um easier optimization right so maybe i'm gonna actually put it aside uh, maybe i'm gonna just put it aside so another very easy optimization is to not use dp right so and um we can basically use the grad instead of dp and that will turn it into more of a like a greedy solution. Um, what's funny is, what's funny is, the way we can just do DP is by replacing DP with grad, which means this kind of thing becomes a parameter. So we need to factor out, uh, we need to factor out this entire, this entire function somehow. So the question is how we're going to do that. I get the same way we usually do that, right? So let's actually go ahead and just like put this thing in here. Uh, and let's say remove sim, right? So remove sim. And now I'm going to just literally do something like this static void, remove sim. And we will figure out what this function should accept by following the compilation errors as usual, as usual. So what do we want? So image, okay, so that means we have to pass an image in here. Um, so yeah, 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 that's cool. So this is going to be image. Uh, what's the other thing we have to pass in here? Uh, DP, and that's the thing that can be parameterized in here. So, and in fact, I would like to maybe call DP something like map, uh, right? So, because instead of DP, you can just use grad and it's going to be worse, but it's going to be faster because we don't have to compute DP. So let's replace DP with map, uh, like so. Right. Uh -huh. And what else do we have in here? So luminance, uh, we also have to accept the luminance. Uh, so it's going to be map, uh, lum. Right, there we go. Um, so what's the order of those things? Uh, and in here is going to be like that. So we pass the image, pass the luminance, and here we pass dp. Uh, there we go. Mm, so. uh, all right. <clears throat> all righty. So three, which is understandable. So uh, the idea is, the idea is use grad instead of dp and don't recompute dp on each individual iteration. Just like simply don't do that. Uh, so that is very much a greedy solution, but because you eliminate the whole step in here, it should be faster. So let's actually see how much faster it will become. Um, I didn't change anything, that's surprising actually. So that means maybe that was not the slowest solution I mean, not the slowest step. That is very fascinating. It like didn't change anything. So let's take a take a look at the result. Is it different? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is actually different. <laughs> this is so fucking cute. Holy shit, this is so cute. <laughs> Uh, so, I think you're finding the Emacs terminal. It doesn't even, people, what the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, let's actually try to illuminate the this thing. 
like it doesn't output that much text to actually for that thing to matter like i do not believe that it's going to be a significant improvement it's not it's not even close to be significant improvement it's it's a little bit of a text at a very slow speed well I'm, okay i'm gonna ignore it. like literally literally trolling me Ugh, jesus christ um Uh, so let me let me see uh all right so it's very interesting so just not doing dp all the time uh doesn't improve it so dp is actually a very fast step so the main source of uh slowness is apparently is apparently ca coming from the sobel operator all right so that means that's the thing that we have to tackle in here um so and what's funny is that the sobel operator is actually very much parallelizable if you think about it yeah, it is very much parallelizable. Um, mm, 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 mm. So, you know what? I think I want to make a small break. I think I want to make a small break and refill my cup of tea. And I'm going to think how we're going to approach this entire stuff. Uh, right. So, maybe we can try to parallelize that. Uh, but even without the parallelization, like the fact that you can only need to recompute like a certain amount of the kernels is actually very much low hanging fruit that we shouldn't ignore. It's just like I'm not sure how like conveniently organize this entire thing, right? Like I'm not sure how conveniently organize this entire thing. For example, if I'm iterating from down in here, I can, okay, I can add the coordinates of this thing in here which is fine right so i remove this thing but then um then like what do i add i also have to add this thing uh right i also have to add this thing but this thing got removed right so this thing marked this one as to recompute but then on the next iteration it got removed so it just like looks a little bit weird though once as we remove this thing, as we remove this thing, we kind of know um, what we're removing in here anyway. So, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of interesting. So in any case, um, so the idea is to actually save this sim so it can be easily replayed later. Uh, right, so because to recompute the Sobel filter, I need to know the entirety of the sim already. Uh, right, so but I don't know the entirety of the sim as I basically recomputed. So what I'm thinking is that um, we need to pre-allocate some array uh, of the height of the image. So and in fact, and in fact. Uh, Probably what we want to do, we want to have like a array of seams, right? So let's call it seams, right? Because the, the word seam is already kind of taken, but seams imply that we have several of them, which is not like exactly what, what, what we have in here. But anyway, so size of seams, like so, multiplied by the height of this entire stuff, right? So we have that. And here we're removing the seams. Uh, Right, but what effectively we're doing, we're kind of recomputing. Um, we're kind of recomputing this sim. So what I'm thinking is, we need to factor out the logic of computing the sim to a separate function. So um, you know, compute uh, the sim. So here we accept the image. So here's the image, but maybe image doesn't really matter. What we care about in here is actually the map, right? So we're doing that based on the map, uh, right? And we're also going to accept this seams array that we pre-allocated in there. So the gist of this entire stuff is this thing. So we're just computing the seam and the seam is located at actually, uh, the sim is located at y in here. 
So what I'm thinking is maybe we could do something like sim y equal to zero sim y. This is a very cool idea, honestly. Right, this is a very cool idea. So that means instead of a single variable sim, now we have an array of like variable sims, um, which is super cool, honestly, which is super cool. So and then in here, as we iterate this entire thing down, um, so we have the original sim. Um, which is not particularly an original sim. It's more like a y plus one, right? So it's more like a y plus one. Uh huh. Mm -mm. Uh, so we. Oh, that is very freaking cool. Because now we can do sim y. Okay, I see how we can do that. So original sim is a y plus one. Yeah. Uh huh. Just a second. Uh, sims y plus one. Just the sim is actually just y. So was, there's a next and like a previous one. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Actually, the other way around. Yeah, actually, the other way around. And ironically, just a second, let me let me go back. Um, so original sim is a sim. It's the current one. Damn, I'm not quite sure. Like it fucks up with my brain. It really fucks up with my brain. I can't comprehend this thing. Uh, I, I'm trying to just like use it as it is. Um, what I'm thinking is that sims y now have to be sims y plus one, right? So that's sort of like the new thing. Um, that's sort of like the new thing. Uh, but then when we're doing that thing, we do sims y plus one uh, and this is going to be sims y sims y and i think i did the correct thing in here i think so um yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah i think so cool so that way we compute in that sim so now when we are removing the sim and that's the cool part when we are removing the sim we don't really need to do that stuff because the sim is kind of pre-computed so we essentially can just like provide the sim in here right so this is the sims uh so which means and i'm gonna actually cross off this entire thing uh so we just iterate the y uh, to something like image height and what's important here is that all of these things they have the same size but i'm not sure if i like want to double check that for, for so many things in here so and in here what we're doing is just that just that uh, seems because we offloaded computing that sim to a completely separate function, so we don't really have to do that in here. We can just follow that sim and remove it. So it's like we, we split these two operations into separate parts. Um, Casencio, thank you so much for Twitch Prime with the message. Always a pleasure listening your thoughts. Thank you. I didn't expect that. I'm just I thought I'm just like rumbling. So <laughs> For me, one of the most enjoyable things in the stream is to follow those thoughts. I'm not sure if I'm always capable of like exposing my thoughts, th my thoughts well enough for people to understand. But I mean, I'm glad that people like to, to follow them. So let's re uh, replace image with map uh, like so. Mm -hmm. 
So we just do that. Uh, cool, cool, cool. And here, by the way, we don't even have to do that anymore. All right, so we can just do it like that. Uh, all right, so let me try to maybe um, recompile this entire thing and see, like, follow the compilation errors instead. So this is going to be sims y. Uh, all right, so what else do we have in here? So this is more like sims. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, sims. Uh, yeah, so when we're removing the sim, well, first thing we have to do, we have to recompute uh, or compute sim. Uh, we're providing a map, which in our case is dp, uh, all right, and we also provides the sims. Uh, since we don't really plan to use grad, because it's completely incorrect, uh, so I suppose instead of calling it a map, we should just call it dp, right? So I wanted to call it map because I thought it's going to be customizable, uh, so I, let's just use dp instead. And dp is not that slow of a step, honestly, right? So just trying to eliminate dp didn't make it faster and it made it incorrect so i don't really care about this thing anymore then uh so compute the sim we provide dp and we just do that so on and so forth uh so then we don't even have to provide the grad because we already pre-computed the sims so this is basically what we're doing here uh so right now i just want to check if it didn't break anything that's what i'm looking for so let's see if it didn't break anything hopefully it didn't Okay, it works, All right? So we didn't break anything. So I managed to sort of separate the operation of computing the sim, right? And then removing the sim from the uh, from the image and luminance and so on and so forth. Uh, okay, so that's what we're doing here. We just removed the sim. <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And interestingly now, Interestingly, now. Mm. We kind of want to. In a Sobel operator, right? In a Sobel operator, um, we want to kind of remove these things. Right, uh, let me actually. Just do it like that. So this is the copy. I don't want to uh, lose that one. Uh -huh. Right, and then we have to kind of follow that seam again. And we have to know that some of that stuff is going to be removed. Mm -mm. Some of that stuff is going to be removed. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Damn, it's not really helping that much. Thinking like, what's the best way to approach this entire thing? Is just maybe having a completely separate map uh, for which I can just like do it like that. I don't fucking know, man. Like I, I thought I figured it out when I was making a break. Thought that if I save the sim, I can just backtrack it again. Um, but that doesn't really help that much, honestly, right? Because uh, okay, I'm backtracking the sim. Then I suppose I can. Okay, so I removed this thing, uh, and I removed this thing. So how did that help me? That didn't really help me at all. So that only made it more difficult. The easiest way would be to maybe, uh, like again, just mark all of them in a certain way with a, like sort of like a NAND value. But then I, I have to iterate through this entire thing anyway. So it doesn't really solve any problems per se. But we can try to do that. Uh, right, because the computing of the single like a Sobel filter thing, all right, it involves like, SQRT and shit, right? So maybe eliminating that SQRT is going to make it faster. Um, so yeah, I'm not 100% sure. So what kind of like a NAN value we can pick? Uh, what kind of NAN value we can pick? I wonder, so what if I uh, take something like this, 
uh, and I'm going to say it's going to be X. And let's say it's going to be C, 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 right. So is it an N? Um, I don't really know, honestly. So printf, so let's actually print it. So let's take, take a pointer at these things and then the float and then dereference this entire thing. And let's just run it. So is it an N? No, it is not an N. So would be a good, what would be a good N, honestly? Um, so I don't remember how you construct an N, uh, maybe something like, um, so everything F is an N, right? It must be. Yeah. Okay. So like everything F is a good N, I think, right? So minus N. Um, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, as we uh, removing this seam, all right, and to be fair, removing this seam is such a primitive operation that I don't think it has to be a function. So the, the most complexity was in computing this seam, all right? So that was the most of the complexity. Uh, all right, remove seam, remove the seam, like they open the chat, I don't know. Uh, all right. So that's pretty cool. And now, uh, as I remove a particular seam, right, as I remove a particular seam, I just need to mark those things in a certain way. So how can I easily like construct this as a float? All right. So can I just I don't know is there any easy, easy way to construct uh, like this kind of none in a float way if you know what I mean or maybe it doesn't even matter right because one thing I can do when I'm accessing uh, a particular field in here right so l let's imagine that I do something like at uh, then this is a grad and I took a specific value right so y and x uh, I can always take a pointer of this thing and just like uh, like cast it like this and then just assign this kind of thing. And there you go, I marked it. And then later when I need to find that specific value, I can always compare that to that. Okay, so th th that way it may work actually. Right, so that's, uh, that's an interesting way to mark it, I suppose. Anyways, uh, so I need to do that square thingy uh, that I already do in here, right? So that's definitely what I need to do. So I might as well just copy paste this entire stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I need to copy paste this entire thing. And uh, so CX is basically seems Y. And Y is the Y, unfortunately. So this Y is already kind of taken. So let's actually call it CY, right? So let's call it CY. So, and this is going to be CY. So it's sort of like center uh, CY. And that way I can just do something like, like this. We can even say that CX is in fact something like this. In fact, we can factor it out like that. Uh, all right, so it's CX now, CY, CX, and this is kind of similar to what we have in here. Uh, all right, and so we, we also have this condition that checks for uh, whether we are within the range of certain things, right? So that's a very important condition, in my opinion. And this is where we can mark, mark the, uh, you know, the grad. Uh, so mat, I think at first it accepts the row and column, so it's going to be Y and X. So then I'm going to take the pointer to this entire thing and then cast it to that and then just do FF, 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 right? So there we go. So we mark this entire shit to be like that. Cool. Very, very freaking cool. Uh, so, um, all right. So if we're not going to be recomputing the Sobel operator all the time, we, we need to compute it only once, right? So here we computed it only once and then we're going to be 
patching it up, so to speak, if that makes any sense. We're going to be patching it up. Um, all right, so we did that. And then we need to essentially uh, maybe even remove all of that stuff. But I feel like the removing of the column for the grad has to happen after this entire thing. So we kind of need to have the second iteration along the sim in here, right? The second iteration along the sim in here. Um, right. Then we subtract this thing in here and then we need to patch them up, right? So then we need to patch, patch them up. Uh, so let me see, let, let me find a Sobel filter uh, somewhere here. So that's basically the iteration we do in here. Uh, and the way we're going to do that, right? So we just iterated that stuff. Uh, so this one is going to be just a grud. Uh, and Sobel filter at. Um, Oh yeah, so we definitely have to do the mat, but this is going to be the luminance, right? So it's going to be the luminance. Mm -hmm. So if uh, this particular thing, if this particular thing, if we take a pointer of this thing and convert it to int32 pointer, and then we compare it to that stupid FFFF, whatever, whatever. All right, so we have to recompute its value. Uh, with this subtle filter. So, and the hope is effectively, the hope is that um, we're just not gonna do the very expensive security operation on each individual pixel here, and hopefully, overall, it's gonna become faster if I didn't do much fucky wackiness in here, right? So, maybe I'm actually fucked up something in this algorithm, but I didn't think so. I don't really think so, actually. Uh, you know what's funny is that for this sort of like a symmetry, maybe it makes sense to actually remove these things in here, right? So here we specifically just mark out the patches of the Sobel filter that we need to recompute, and then we remove all of the columns in here, uh, right? Then we remove the column and then we patch it up. So we could actually um, even make it cooler in the sense that we uh, we know <clears throat> that when we removed the the sim, we, I already removed the comment with the sub filter as sim and thing, you know, whatever. So let me put it somewhere here. So let's imagine that we have this kind of shit yet again, right? So and the sim goes something like this, right? So I need I need this sim again, <laughs> right? Um, Mm, yes, yeah, something like this. So this one, yeah. So it also takes that. This is that. This is that. Uh, maybe, maybe I need to actually do something like this so it's a little bit better. Like so. So I know when when I remove the sim, right? When I remove the sim, I know that the thing that I need, that I need to patch up are like around the area where the sim was. So maybe I can just still, still follow the sim, but I roughly know where I have to look here, right? Like I roughly kind of have to like know where all of that is. So I don't have to iter iterate the entirety of the message. So that could be another optimization in here, right? So we roughly kind of know where all of these patches are located, roughly. Uh, so to speak. Uh, but anyway, so let's actually see if this entire thing even compiles because who freaking knows? It doesn't even compile. Look at that because it's CY. Uh, what else do we have in here? So this is a mat <clears throat> in here. We in fact are iterating. So in reality here, what we're doing, we're iterating actually grad. So I would like to call this thing a grad. So maybe that thing could be also factored out to a separate uh, to a separate function, right? So uh, we'll see how it goes. CYCX, uh, and yeah, so in this particular case, CX is actually that. All right, okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. 
we have it is faster and if we take a look at that it didn't break isn't that a boogers isn't that a boogers mine friend so it's now so initially at the beginning of the stream it was actually six seconds now it's 1.7 1.7 very nice very nice indeed so because sqrt is a very expensive operation so we just like reduce the amount of sqrts basically real time <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> We just reduced the amount of securities and uh, it became faster. And I'm basically eyeballing all of that, right? So I'm basically eyeballing all that. I'm not doing like a proper profiling because I don't even fucking know how to do the proper profiling. Um, so the, the, <laughs> the, most, the most bizarre thing about profiling, especially if you're watching somebody like Jonathan Blow, he would have like a very sophisticated precise setup to measure some sort of a performance right so it's very sophisticated very precise like a lot of different reports and stuff like that and he would pinpoint precisely what's wrong and stuff like that and then he would say yeah I, this is not the correct way of doing that i'm not really measuring the performance but i'm just like you know estimating and stuff like that so th that's the most bizarre thing when you watch jonathan blow he's just like doing insane fucking shit and then he says that, that's not the right way to do that it's like i'm not doing that properly because i'm i'm slacking today <laughs> Or something like that. It's just like, holy fuck. Ah, oh, Jesus. It's just like, it's, it's kind of similar to watching like a, like a professional artist who's just like drawing a masterpiece and say, ah, I just sketched out some ideas. I'm going to throw it away. It's just like, yeah, it's just sketched out some idea. Um. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, again. Um what we uh, can improve here again so we're still iterating the entire image to find these patches so to speak right so we're still doing that um so the my idea would be to actually not iterate the entirety of the grid for for these patches <clears throat> so by the way uh, i think i need to test that on the on the broadway thingy um because i want to see if it's like yeah so that one how much time this one took i don't remember honestly um but it's it, it's the long one it was one minute yeah, yeah so it was one minute so how much time does it take now uh 17 was it really one minute 17 seconds look at that and yeah, it's it's basically that, right? So <clears throat> So that's the that's the trick in optimizing your program. Just don't do just don't do things that you don't need to do, right? So <laughs> just don't do useless work, essentially. Just don't do useless work. Just don't do useless work. Um so since we don't really have a single variable sim anymore i think it would make sense to rename word the sims to a sim right because that kind of bothers me so the only reason why i called sims is because i thought i'm gonna have the variable sim right so i don't really have that variable anymore so it's not really uh important to call it like that naming is the hardest part of programming am i right Am I right, fellow programmers? Isn't it relatable, my fellow programmers? Naming the variables is very hard. No. Oh, my face when I forget to put a semicolon. Haha, <laughs> programmer humor. Am I right, fellow programmers? <laughs> I'm so fucking sorry. <clears throat> um, Clone, what's up? What's up, what's up? correct yeah that's what it feels like when i read programmer humor honestly it's just like it feels like a bunch of non-programmers just learned programming memes and just like you know <laughs> trying to impress each other that's what it feels like it's just so weird to me <laughs> um so six seconds, 1.7, but people swear the problem is Emacs. Yeah, but 
What's interesting is that Emacs.io is shit. I do agree with that, but not in this case. Uh, right, not in this case. Students basically memeing, yeah. They're just like, people are trying to learn programming through memes. What the fuck is that? But maybe, maybe it will work. Who knows? And back in my days, uh, back in my days when I, I started to program in 2006 and I remember quite vividly that at the time if you say that I want to be a programmer the reaction everyone's reaction literally would be ew what a nerd ew and it's just like it's so bizarre to me how everyone wants to be a programmer this day it's just like that's that's not the reality where I started programming that was freaking different uh, most intended discussion seems meme, uh, meme directed. Yeah, that's actually true. That is actually true. It's kind of difficult because uh, maybe because we have way too many people on the internet. So uh, it's sort of like the only way to communicate with like this amount of people is to through like sort of well established patterns that people can instantly recognize or something like that. It's such a bizarre. Um, it's such a bizarre phenomenon that we never seen before, right? Because we never had such informational systems before with this amount of information at such a high speed. So it's sort of like a thing that we never experienced before. Programming discussion would probably be nicer if there was a less money to be. Oh, that's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with money per se. There's nothing wrong with money. But the problem with money is that they usually attract the worst kind of people. So that's the problem. So money is not a problem. Money is good. Uh, it's the kind of people that the money usually attract. That's kind of the problem. Mm. Mm. People are too addicted to meme funny instead of uh, posting something real. Yeah. I also love money. Everybody loves money. Mm. Mm -mm. I can buy my tea on the money. So, uh, how can we freaking fix this shit? So, essentially, the idea we're, we're already kind of iterating the same, right? But the idea would be to essentially um, not iterate the entirety of the role, right? So, we're iterating rows, right? Like that. And then within the row, we like iterating everything. But we don't have to. What we can do, we can kind of roughly locate uh, sim, cy, and this denotes the area within the row roughly where the patches are located. So it points at the cluster of patches, right? And patch is basically a, a float with this sort of none, right? So th that's what it is. This is like a, the, the first time ever in my life I like created this hack. Uh, right, which is a kind of cool trick, honestly. Is, is that a very common thing in, in programming? Uh, right, because that occurred to me only like right on the stream, right? Is, is that a good idea even? Um, so what I like about this thing is that it's none. So it's obviously something off. And I'm using something obviously off as a marker to recompute that value later. And I, I kind of like this trick. It's, it's kind of cool, uh, I think. Um, if it compiles uh, equal idea good no, not necessarily not in the world of C where you have shit ton of undefined behavior I'm not even sure if that's defined behavior I think like type punning is not a particularly defined behavior so the undefined behavior, behavior lawyers are gonna eat me alive uh, using null for point is a similar idea probably yeah. well, what's funny is that uh, you can even use different kind of nuns for denoting different kinds of things, right? So maybe for different values, you have to use different functions to patch them properly. So you can just have FF, maybe another one is going to be something like AAFF, and they will denote like different things. Uh, right, so who said you can't do that? So look at, it's like a NAN boxing. So I just answered my question. People do shit like that. Nan boxing is literally that, isn't it? It's just like it's a more advanced version of that. 
you not only just marking these things with none, you store an entire freaking pointer instead of in, in, inside of flow. For, for new people on the channel, have you guys heard about NAND boxing? Uh, right. If you never heard about NAND boxing, you you never experienced life, honestly. Uh, right. It's such a bizarre fucking concept. Uh, <laughs> not that one. It's Nan's boxing. <laughs> uh, Nan boxing. So, okay, the idea is, essentially, you literally store a pointer inside a float, right? That float is an incorrect float, right? That float is an incorrect float. But inside of it, there is a pointer. So, and the idea here is that, yeah, yeah. Um, it's used in scripting languages, specifically in JavaScript. It's very actively used in JavaScript. So essentially, a value you can denote a value within an interpreter as just a single float, right? Just a single float, and float inside of it stores a tag, which denotes whether it's an integer, a float, or something else, and that something else is usually a pointer that points to a bigger structure in the memory. So that way, uh, right, so again, you can denote a C, like value of any type within an interpreter as a single float. Uh, right, so and that's what NAND boxing is. That's what NAND boxing is. Um, right, so it's, it's very useful when essentially your value within the inter interpreter must be of a certain th uh, size, for example, a size of uh, float. But I think in, in case of non boxing, they use double, right? So 64 bits, uh, right? <clears throat> That's very cool. That's an interesting idea. But uh, the consequence of that idea is that because you're storing also a tag within the double, you don't have all 64 bits of the pointer. You don't have all 64 bits of the pointer. So you have a limit on how much memory you can address using NAND boxing. But the amount of bits you have for the pointer, I think it's 58 or something. I think it's like around 58. Like, I don't quite remember. It's already like, like enough, more than enough. It's not the 32 bits kind of situation where you can only address 4 gigabytes. Right, you can address enormous amount of memory with like 58 bits, but it's less than 64. Um, so using a float number to box a none, yeah, that's what you do. Anyways, uh, so the question is, the question is, if I just use CX, so I'm probably, if I'm using CX, I'm probably pointing right at the cluster, right? So essentially we had this situation. So this was the sim that we removed and I may have this kind of situation in here. So I was pointing at that, I removed that, I'm now pointing at this. So I'm quite likely pointing at one of the things. So the only thing I need to do, I need to move to the left and move to the right. Move to the left and move to the right. Uh, so, but CX is not necessarily going to be a valid thing. For example, what if the seam, a chunk of the seam, was at the edge in here and then it got removed? That index got invalidated completely. So it got invalidated. Uh, so what I'm thinking is what we have to do, maybe we have to do two loops essentially we start from here and we do while cx is less than grad width right um something like that plus plus cx and we move into the right we're essentially moving to the right and honestly we can also do a very cool thing while it's less than grad width and it is the mark marker we can just do something like that right so we're starting from there and we're moving to to the right we can now try a similar thing we're starting from here and move to the left but since we already kind of handled whatever we had at the seam we probably want to do minus one 
while cx is greater or equal to the zero and we're subtracting this entire thing and then we're doing the same thing in here so we're not iterating the entire row we roughly estimating so at the same we probably add the cluster of these patches and we're just moving to the right and to the left that way we're like yeah we don't do that many operations hopefully um so yeah anyways let's see if it's going to do anything if it's going to improve the performance it's going to even compile i'm not sure uh yeah it's improved it a little bit i suppose so yeah it is correct it's it's yeah so that that's the correct face <laughs> i know it when i see it trust me chat this is the correct face uh it looks faster it was yeah so before it was 1.7 now it's 1.3 um yeah so it's consistently 1.3 so we just do less separations in here we just simply do less separations uh right so what about the broadway tower so it was like 17 seconds uh all these things kind of end up and now maybe we can start actually getting rid of the output uh All right, so it's 14. It was 17, now it's 14. Okay, so uh, let, let's double check if it's a correct value. Yeah, it's, it's a correct thing. Okay, that's cool. So let's get rid of the output that everyone is so freaking crazy about. Mm -hmm. So it was like, how much? Mm hmm. still pretty slow i'm surprised why why can't it be even faster it's still 13 okay so that's fine that's fine that's fine mm -hmm. so it's pretty cool mm. no in k okay so we do the grad and dp so what if we now use the lazy approach anyways so let me just go ahead and simply uh, commit whatever we have uh, simply commit whatever we have hopefully i didn't make too many mistakes so if i made any mistakes this time feel free to submit a pull request uh right try uh like speed up the um resizing by not doing things that are not needed right so um i remove the writing the the dp image i don't write the dp image so yeah so this entire thing expands to this stuff. It expands to nothing. It's disabled. <laughs> you did not just you didn't know, right? So, uh, yeah. So this is a debug thing, and I can actually enable it or disable it. Um, to be fair, it's not really needed anymore per se, but I mean, it's just there for whatever reason. Uh, from the times when I was actually experimenting with all that. Anyways, I want to kind of factor out uh, some of that stuff um, right mm -mm. so maybe how can we call that um, compute um, I don't know, prepare or maybe mark out sobel patches <laughs> I really like how this thing makes it sound like I'm doing something serious right oh, oh yes mark out the the sobel patches right right so it's, it's the, the ones that i wrote in in that paper that i released uh, last month the, the, the sobel patches so. uh all right chat chat do you know how to recompute the sobel patches 
Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Alright, so let's actually try to compile this entire thing. So we need to pass the grad and sim. Uh, there we go. So what else do we need in here? Um, grad and sim. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm, it's your building stuff. Mm -hmm. So it should be 17 seconds, right? Yeah, this is 14. Okay, so I want to try this idea yet again, where we do not recompute the entirety of DP, like at all. Um, so where is DP? Oh, DP is only needed like in here. Which is which is fine, I guess. So essentially, just use grad instead of dp. So that will turn the solution into a greedy one, rather than like a dynamic programming one. And let's just try to do that. Uh, it feels like it's not going to improve the performance. I feel like it's not going to perform the performance, right? Oh, it actually improved it to five seconds. Okay, so but the, the result is probably going to suck. Yeah, it actually sucks. So greedy solution that really doesn't really work that well. Huh. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Lena looks especially cute with the with the lazy solution. Uh, I really like it actually. Let me show you how Lena looks like. Uh, so let's, let's take a look at the performance. Mm, yeah, the, look at the performance of the Lena. Like half a second, almost real time. Uh, right, and it's just like this. So cute. It's shy. <laughs> Very shy, Lena. <laughs> so fucking funny. I love it. <clears throat> Anyways. Um, it's, not a, it's not a good solution. So you do need the DP. You do need the DP. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Get it under 16 milliseconds. Yeah, that's probably something that I have to do. Mm. To be fair, like in those demos, in those demos, people were using probably images with smaller resolution. I remember they have a pretty crappy quality. So, yeah, that's probably this is how they achieved the performance, right? So it was like pretty crappy. Um, you know, crappy resolution. So if we're going to be using like OpenMP or stuff like that, how can we even do that? Can we... I guess we can do a little bit of OpenMP on this kind of shit. Um, on this kind of shit. So OpenMP can be applied in here for sure. It can be applied in here as well. So I don't think I'm going to apply anything before that loop. Right, so like in here, I don't think it matters. Uh, but slapping OpenMP here and here might be beneficial. Um, might be beneficial. So yeah, Pragma op uh, OMP Parallel 4. Yeah, 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 so this one, thank you. So I'm gonna place this thing in here and also place this. Thing. Did you guys know that like the C compilers can do this kind of shit? So essentially, uh, in C compilers, you can use this pragma and it will parallelize this for loop. It will just split it into it. Like if you don't uh, have uh, like values that depend on each other, it will just split it into chunks and run in separate threads. So th it's, it's called OpenMP. If you never heard about it, I'll just Google it up, OpenMP. It is a thing. Without an external lib, it will link with an external lib. It will do that, but I mean, it's just like the it's usually shipped with like all the compilers. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's gonna actually improve the performance. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, fork join model, right? So essentially, you 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 fork computation, compute independent parts, and then you join them, right? So ba basically, like reducing or summing them up or something like that. So yeah, so you do like OMP parallel, but I mean, we need to do four, yeah, parallel four. And I don't remember, you have to compile with a special flag or you don't have to compile with a special flag. Uh, so let's, let's just try to compile it as it is and see if it's going to, yeah, ignoring unknown params, okay. <laughs> so um, GCC, uh, GCC flag to enable OpenMP. 
Uh, loop unrolling can help, but I mean, we already uh, put O3, so I presume that it does loop unrolling already. So to activate upon C Fortran, I mean, this Fortran. Uh, okay, so the open MP CMD flag can be used to enable subset of MVC that do not. Uh, all right, so I don't know why it didn't work. So it just says unknown parameter. Hmm. Surprising. Maybe we should do clang instead. Let's let's give it a try. So I already do CC. So I have a this thing actually. Look at that clang. Uh, maybe you... include needed and flag. I see. So I need some sort of example. So I think in Wikipedia. There was an exam. Oh, MP. Yeah, there we go. So, does it have a flag? Uh, F open MP. Okay, I see. I see. I see. I see. PC. Mm -hmm. So, and then in knob, let's go back to just CC, and um, yeah. Uh, F open MP. Right. F open MP. Let's go. I feel like it's not going to improve it that much. I have a feeling, I have a strange feeling that it's not going to improve it that much. Maybe it's going to even make it slower. Fuck. <laughs> I feel like it's going to, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's making it slower. <laughs> uh, F open MP and L O M P. But I mean, it doesn't say that you have to do L O M P. Yeah, thread creation overhead, thread creation overhead. So. That's the problem. That's the problem. Anyways, um, so let me see. We can try to link L O M P. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like it is what it is. Man, if I did. Mm. Oh shit. So you, you don't really need this kind of stuff. Okay then. So let's not do Open MP then. But it was nice to try, right? So I rarely have an opportunity to use OpenMP, right? Like for real. So it was interesting. Maybe it will help in here, but it didn't really help in here. Okay. So is it compiling? Yeah. So it's 1.2. You can tune out the number of threads with num threads. So we can try to. Eh, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Mark out sobel patches. I didn't really do anything particularly special here. I just factored out the mark out sobel patches. Um, all right. So factor out this thing. So all right. Let's compare the performance at the beginning of the stream. Uh, so let's go here and let's just run. Lena, so what's the performance of Lena? Are you still on the greedy approach? I didn't think so. I think I switched back. 5.6 seconds. Let's try it one more time, just for a good measure. Mm. You came up with the concept of Sobel patches, and that's powerful. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's that special of a thing. Uh, there we go. So, so it's six seconds. Uh, all right. So let's go to the log and let's switch to the current thing. And now let's run. Um, and 1.3. All right. So that's a good improvement. And we can even compare, right? So visually, they're indistinguishable. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. And I see you all on the next recreation programming session with Amista Azuzin. Uh, I love you. Mwah.